What is up YouTube? I want to talk about anxiety and insomnia. I want to talk about some of the symptoms of insomnia and how to relieve it, all right? So if you have bad anxiety or panic attacks, health anxiety, depression, you probably know by now that it affects your sleep and not in a good way, in a nightmarish way. Um, it's one of the worst things ever. Uh, the biggest problem I had with anxiety, it seemed like, aside from the panic attacks, uh, really was just the lack of sleep. And when you don't get enough sleep, it messes everything up. In return, it makes your anxiety worse, it makes your panic attacks worse, your depression, whatever anxiety disorder you are going through, it is much worse. So um, basically, what are some of the symptoms of insomnia? Well, first off, it's just a lack of sleep. You're not getting sleep at night. Restlessness, the uh, inability to get comfortable when it's time to go to sleep, um, waking up too early, waking up throughout the night, having nightmares, you know, night sweats. <clears throat> All you do is worry about getting sleep. Um, errors, you know, accidents, injuries during the day because you're too tired to concentrate. So lack of concentration. And what do you know? Increased anxiety and depression. You know, that's what's causing the sleepiness, but some common symptoms of insomnia are anxiety and depression. So what does that mean? This is a crazy cycle, all right? So you're not getting enough sleep that's making you more stressed out whenever, you know, stress and anxiety was what was keeping you from sleeping. So you have to break that cycle and it's very, very, you know, difficult to do. Um, so a little about, you know, myself and my experience with insomnia, uh, it all started from day one on the first panic attack that I had. I had a panic attack at uh, probably 11.30 or 12 in the middle of the night, so I guess 12 in the morning, um, after a weekend of partying and stuff, <laughs> being crazy, basically staying up two nights in a row, being stupid with my friends, um, that's just what I did. So I got back home and I was sleeping, finally, and I jolted up and had this massive panic attack, the first one I've ever had in my life that lasted for six hours so I didn't get any sleep I couldn't fall asleep I tried to lay there uh, I told my mom about it she was gonna pick me up in the morning and she's gonna check my blood pressure she's a nurse so I you know I had trust in her and I told her that I thought I was dying and having a heart attack she told me it sounded like a panic attack and you know thank the Lord that that's what it was so that whole night I didn't sleep I literally was panicky for like four or five hours and then that last hour I remember just trying to lay there and it was, it was terrible. I would lay there and close my eyes because I was so tired. I hadn't slept in like two or three days just from my partying and stuff. Um, and I remember laying there and every time I would start to fall asleep, I would have this crazy jolt, you know, this crazy, I would hear something. I don't know what it was, like a horn, a bell. Uh, one time I heard like a roar from a lion. It was just weird. I couldn't fall asleep. And this was, oh my gosh, man. This lasted hardcore hardcore before I started learning how to deal with it probably for two or three four months I didn't get any sleep ever and I had to call into work so many times because I was falling asleep at the wheel uh, I had no energy it made my anxiety worse I was always worrying about when am I gonna get some sleep and the thing is is that I would be tired and I would be nodding off and I would need naps during the day I would lay down to take naps but that's whenever I would have my freaky nightmares and dreams was during the day and I don't know why but it seems to be common with a lot of people you know whenever you take a nap during the day that seems to be your most vivid dreams so I had nightmares because my anxiety was so high so that made things very very difficult for me um yeah I mean I wasn't I didn't have any energy I was lethargic I was more depressed I was more quiet my social anxiety you know skyrocketed with this uh, I didn't have any motivation no confidence my job performance wasn't as high I was moody I was irritable I had more anger outbursts uh, you know when you're not getting your sleep you know you become desperate and that's why insomnia is just flat-out torture so if you're going through this I apologize you know I'm very very sorry but I definitely understand how it is and it seems like an endless battle. So I went over some of the symptoms. I told you about you know, my experience. Let's get into ways that you can fix this. And I'm gonna tell you right now, it's not gonna be an overnight thing, all right? Um, but the first one's gonna be light exercise. And I say lighter exercise because you don't wanna be too revved up right before bed. So I'm thinking maybe about cut your exercise off, maybe at least you know four hours before it's time for you to go to sleep so 
I would say, you know, jogging, any type of aerobic activity, you know, cardio, some light weight lifting, and experiment with it, you know. Uh, for me, I was able to do more hardcore workouts, and that really helped me out. It tired me out, so, you know, once I started figuring this out, I was like, heck yes, you know, this is helping me get worn out. It helped me fall asleep a little more, but that combined with some of the other things I'm going to tell you, it really helps. Um, but you got to figure out what works for you. Maybe you working out super hard three hours before is going to elevate your heart rate and just get the energy going in your body and you're not going to feel as tired. So maybe a lighter exercise will do the trick. I would start with light and then increase to moderate and then heavy and see what works best for you. Okay. And anx uh, your anxiety is going to improve tremendously with exercise alone. Uh, so that's something that you need to be implementing every day. The next thing is you want to eat smaller meals. All right. And you also want to eat a little earlier than what you're used to eating. I would eat more like the 5 to 6 p.m. and then cut it off after that. Don't be eating after that. Um, whenever your body has to do a lot of digestion, um, that increases a lot of things. It increases the energy and your, your brain activity is going to be going more. Um, if you have any type of sugar or caffeine or anything like that, that's going to make things worse. And plus your body's just having to process that food. So it's going to be harder for you to fall asleep and you need to eat lighter meals at dinner time. I would start with a heavier breakfast in the morning and get lighter as the day goes on. And I know that's hard to do, but if you're desperate, these are some of the things you need to be doing. All right, another one, another one. Um, a really neat one that I didn't think about whenever I was going through this. Um, whenever I was just not falling asleep, I would sit on my phone and I would also be on the computer or I would be watching my flat screen. And the deal is, is that those bright lights, there's been studies and it's proven that looking at that bright light is going to keep you up longer. I don't know the exact science behind that. I didn't do that type of research, but I do know that that bright light affects your sleep. It does not allow you to fall asleep. It keeps you up longer. That's why they say you need to turn off your phone or at the very least, you need to dim the brightness levels on there. Okay, so something to keep in mind there. Also, reading. Reading before bedtime is amazing all right i started doing this because it seemed like anytime i'd pick up a freaking book i would start nodding off and the sad thing is is i love to read but i'm never able to read tons at a time i gotta read like a couple chapters because i literally will fall asleep so reading and uh one of the suggestions that i've actually seen is to actually read with candlelight and it, you know that that's kind of interesting it's different but uh, it's kind of cool because you don't have all those really super bright lights and it's more soothing and relaxing. Maybe put on some light music, you know, some meditation type beats or music and um, listen to that and try that out and see how that works for you. Also, writing in a journal before bed, you know, writing stuff, anything that you're writing or reading before bed and you're tired, it really does a trick. So writing in your journal like you should be doing anyways is something that you want to actually keep in mind. Also, there's natural sleep aids. I'm not going to sit here and tell you you need to be taking Benadryl every single night like I did for a while. I was desperate. I was slamming Benadryl two or three a night, and it's just not healthy for you. It's not great, and it's uh, basically it's going to just prolong the situation and not allow you to actually fix the root problem. So, just a few of those things to keep in mind. You know, dim those lights, get off your technology, read, write, exercise about four hours before bedtime. Don't do it so close as your, you know, your body's going to be revved up. Eat lighter meals so your body isn't having to go through all that digestion and processing. And you also got to think about it, if you have heartburn, it's going to raise those symptoms up at night whenever you lay down. Um, heartburn is crazy at night if you have it, and you know what I mean. If you have bad acid reflux, whenever you lay down, that starts to seep up into your esophagus, and that's whenever you have all these crazy symptoms. And if you have health anxiety or anxiety, panic attacks, that is no good. It's going to keep you up longer. So make sure that you are doing these things, guys. Implement them every single day. If you got some value out of this video, please leave me a like. Leave me a comment down below with some of the things that you experienced with uh, anxiety and insomnia. I hope that uh, you know that you were able to get some good information on the symptoms and apply some of these tips that I gave you guys. You got to be patient with it. You're not going to fix it in one night. Uh, some of these tips aren't going to be the best for you. Some of them will be. So just make sure that you're applying them every day. Work on your anxiety, guys. Practice your meditation, your positive thinking. You know, writing in your journal, writing things that you're thankful for, exercising. Um, you know, eating the correct diet, all these things combined, guys, are tremendous. You got to implement all of them and you got to do them every day. No excuses, guys. 
All right, so leave me a comment down below. Subscribe if you haven't. Hit that notification bell next to it so you can get updates whenever I have my videos. Join the Facebook group down below if you haven't. We're almost to 100 members, and we got a lot of great stuff going on in there. And also, follow my Instagram account down there below also uh, for some cool quotes and pictures. Thank you so much for watching, guys, and you have a great evening.